With over 12,000 cards available for players to choose from, the majority of which saw their initial debut in the anime, you might be inclined to believe that every card from the anime has received a physical print. But the truth is, there are still hundreds of cards from the anime that have never transitioned to the TCG or the OCG. It's almost as though they're being kept hidden. Are these cards simply too powerful to introduce to today's metagame? Today, we're uncovering the secrets of Yu-Gi-Oh! Bakura Ryu, a character who I genuinely believed that the creators of this series had no grand intentions for until they realized that they didn't write in a final villain to get blasted by Yugi's plot armor. Don't get me wrong, Bakura displayed weird and bordering psychotic tendencies, disappearing at the most convenient times, and his hunt for all of the Millennium items wasn't given a ton of depth until the very end. But he ultimately made sense as a villain. Which would explain why he has nearly half a deck worth of cards that are still exclusive to the anime, which are almost exclusively derived from his ultimate final shadow game against Yugi, occurring in episodes 215 through 218. Starting with the only card outside of the final shadow game, his first shadow game against Yugi took place in episode 13, where we see Seven Armed Fiend, a level 1 Dark Fiend normal monster with 666 attack and defense. Leave it to Pecora to have the edgiest card in the entirety of this franchise. But then again, I'd be the first in line to pick this up if they printed a promo version of the card with those exact stats. If I could describe Bakura's final deck in one word, it would be cancerous. Empty Jar, with a little bit of breaking the rules, and a little bit of zombie spam and stun thrown in just to spice things up. So, let's look at what could have been the bane of a player's existence. Starting with the continuous trap card Necro Cycle, on a soft once per turn during either player's turn, if you control a face-up Necro Mannequin, you can special summon one Necro Mannequin from your deck. And the monster in question, Necro Mannequin, is a level 3 dark zombie normal monster with 500 attack and defense. Sounds degenerate. My first thought on reading this is that summoning a second Necro Mannequin on your opponent's turn while you control IP Mask Arena gives you immediate access to a Link 4. It's not your turn, it's our turn. It seems like in every episode of this series thus far, the Infernity Archetype has at least one representation of outside generic support from the Duel Monsters characters, and here we have Bakura's contribution. Disgraced Mage, a level 4 dark zombie effect monster with 1700 attack and 1400 defense, and if this monster destroys an opponent's monster by battle, that monster is shuffled into the deck instead of sending it to the graveyard. If this card is destroyed by battle and you would take battle damage, you can shuffle this card and all cards in your hand into the deck instead. Infernity players, is this your king? And the next two cards fall right in line with the pseudo zombie spam engine of Bakura's deck. Necro Soldier, a level 4 dark zombie effect monster with zero attack and defense, which can special summon another copy of itself from the hand or deck during each of your opponent's standby phases as a non once per turn effect. And Necro Wall, a level 3 dark zombie effect monster with zero attack and defense, and this monster special summons Necro Wall tokens, level 1 dark zombies with zero attack and defense, during your end phase for each face-up zombie type monster on the field, excluding itself. So, you might be thinking, well that isn't too strong, it's completely reliant on reserving your field presence to even get the effect off, and if your field is full, then the effect fizzles. You're 100% correct, but it's Bakura. Let me introduce you to Cursed Twin Dolls, a continuous spell card that begins with your opponent randomly selecting one of its two effects to apply to themselves while you receive the other effect. Not entirely sure how an effect is randomly chosen, so I can deduce that this would become a coin flip type of effect. The first effect is that you gain 200 life points for each card sent to either player's graveyard. Boring. But the second effect is where we start taking rules and bending them ever so slightly. Each monster in your graveyard is treated as one monster you control. Wow. Without counting towards your 5 monster card zone limit. Wow. Those monsters cannot attack or be attacked, cannot activate their effects, cannot be used as a cost, cannot be removed from the graveyard, are unaffected by the effects of spell, traps, and effect monsters, and their effects are negated. Also, remove from play all spell and trap cards in your graveyard. Cards cannot be sent from your hand, deck, fusion deck, or field to your graveyard by card effects. If your monster card zones are unused, your opponent's monsters can attack you directly. We're not even playing Yu-Gi-Oh at this point. This is 3D Yu-Gi-Oh if I've ever seen it. It's broken, let's get that out of the way, but I'm curious to see how an effect like this could be implemented into the physical game. Could these monsters in your graveyard now be used as material for extra deck monsters? If the answer is yes, Exodia help us. 
An argument against this would be that you're really only able to capitalize on it when your graveyard is stacked, meaning you have to build your deck solely around this one card. That's mostly true, I mean Bakura basically did exactly that with his next two anime exclusive cards. Necro Jar, a level 3 dark rock effect monster with 1100 attack and 300 defense. Look, you thought the other jar monsters were problematic, well this ugly little thing is unaffected by the effects of spell cards, and if this card is destroyed by battle, your opponent must send one card from the top of their deck to the graveyard for each multiple of 300 battle damage this card's controller took from that battle. And this is an effect that you can proc by ramming Necro Jar into one of your opponent's beefy monsters and taking some damage. All things considered, I like this one being a rock type enthusiast. But if you're not a rock supporter like me, Bakura's continuous spell card counterbalance can fulfill all of your wildest empty jar wet dreams. During each player's end phase, the turn player must send cards equal to the number of monsters on the field from the top of their deck to the graveyard. Look, as much as I want the physical card game to have every card that was present in the anime, this is leaning way too hard into a modern age empty jar. And remember, in combination with cursed twin dolls, this effect only applies to your opponent. The interns at Konami that write the ban list are going to be working overtime with this one. Moving away from cards that give me nightmares, Bakura actually had some really solid staple-esque cards in his arsenal, and they're among my favorites in his catalog. Rebirth Tablet, a normal trap card that can only be activated when a monster you control is destroyed by battle. Special summon one monster from your graveyard. Really good stuff. Regardless of it being slow, I still believe in battle traps, and will be slotting in three of these to just about every deck I play. This card pairs really well with Necro Jar to dump a substantial amount of cards from your opponent's deck. And the second staple card I'd want to experiment with is the normal trap card, Mirror Tablet. Mirror Tablet can only be activated during the turn an opponent's monster destroyed a monster you control by battle. Select one face-up monster you control. It gains attack equal to half the original attack of one of your opponent's monsters that destroyed a monster you control by battle. Those monsters must battle this turn. At the end of the battle, the attack returns to normal, so the boost isn't permanent. I think the flexibility of this card is where it shines, as it doesn't need to be a direct response to an attack or your monster being destroyed. Makuro's back row has me overall interested in playing his deck. Narrow Corridor, our next card, is no exception. A continuous trap card which prevents your opponent from attacking with more than two monsters during their battle phases. Admittedly, it is the weakest in comparison to the previous two. But, this one is interesting because I don't believe we have a card that does this in the physical game. We have cards that force all of your opponent's monsters to attack, and I believe we have a card or two that makes it so only one monster can attack, so this would be a nice card to add to that arsenal. But a card that won't be added to any arsenal at any point in time, even if it was released back in the Stone Age of Yu-Gi-Oh! is Negate Defense, a normal spell card which carries the exact effect of Stop Defense with the addition that the targeted monster cannot change its battle position except by card effect. Ah yes, it's so much better, said no one. Bakura's final card, despite originating from his own deck, would be the card that destroyed him in the end. It's poetic in a sense. Spirit Sword of Sealing, a normal spell card with the following effect. Select and remove from play one monster on the field, with its effects negated. After activation, this card remains face up on the field. The removed monster cannot be special summoned by card effects. If a monster belonging to the removed monster's owner is destroyed and sent to the graveyard, return the removed monster to its owner's side of the field and destroy this card. This card cannot be destroyed except by its own effect. Another card with a ton of flexibility in its application. You can use it to protect one of your own monsters and then retrieve it when the tide of the duel turns against you, or you can use it to evade a problematic monster of your opponent. The list goes on. As a complete package, Bakura's deck is nothing short of giving me chest pain, but as individual pieces and a few duos of demise, these cards offer a lot of interesting buffs to existing decks that we have in the physical game. I definitely would have liked to see them debut when we got Bakura's Legendary Duelist set, but who knows when we'll get them now, if we ever do. But that's going to wrap up this week's episode of The Secrets of Yu-Gi-Oh! We only have a few more arcs of the Duel Monsters anime and some miscellaneous cards to cover until we're done with Season 1 of this series and we transition to the GX era. Let me know what cards you're excited to see. Drop a comment down below. If you liked the video, don't forget to drop a big thumbs up. It's greatly appreciated, as always guys. And until next time, this has been Purple Pineapple TV, signing off.